Europe um, last year adopted a very ambitious policy for promoting renewables to 2020. This is part of the wider policy on climate change. Uh, we have national targets for renewable penetration. These are very challenging. They will uh, make renewables uh, take up a major share of uh, electricity production in, in all member states. And this has clearly an impact on markets and networks. Uh, in the case of networks, clearly we are entering into a new paradigm with 30% or so uh, renewables in electricity generations. We have to rethink the way in which we develop the network. Renewables have specific characteristics. Um, some of them are more difficult to predict ahead of time. Uh, some of them are very variable over time. Uh, most of them are actually located in new locations uh, away from load centers, if we think about solar and wind. Uh, then, uh, therefore, all this has strong impacts on, on network planning and network regulation. Uh, in fact, uh, if we look at uh, what the um, National Renewable Energy Action Plan would predict for the next 10 years, we see that the largest increase in proportional terms uh, would be shown by um, solar and offshore winds. Uh, these are sort of new technologies. Um, as I said, they will be located away from, um, from, from load centers. Therefore, they will require longer um, grids um, stretching out in areas which were not traditionally covered by the European network. Uh, they are also more difficult to predict, even though we are making progress on that. Um, therefore, they will require also stronger networks because the networks will have to withstand uh, quite sudden variability in the output of these generation uh, technologies. And then um, clearly we have also to take into account the need to, um, for the system to absorb these variabilities and therefore we may need stronger networks to uh, connect these technologies with other technologies which are able to complement them, for example reservoir hydro. Then um, one other aspect of renewables is uh, distributed generation, i.e. generation, uh, smaller size generation uh, connected to the distribution network. Again here we are entering into a new paradigm because in this case energy may have to flow upwards on the grid uh, rather than what is usually do which is basically from transmission down to distribution to clients. So again in this case what we need is probably smarter grids. Uh, so therefore not just longer grid uh, not just stronger grids, but also smarter grids. Uh, this is the challenge. This is a challenge in network planning uh, for, for the next years. Um, it clearly requires a more European-wide approach, a uh, single European approach to this, and the third package provides the instrument for that through the um, EU-wide 10-year network development plan that the ENSO-E, um, the European Network Transmission System Operator, is required to develop them in two years. They developed the first edition last year, they are expected to, uh, to develop the next edition next year and I must say that there are great expectations that uh, this will become the central reference tool for uh, the planning of the European grid for the future. When it comes to regulation, clearly we have to think how the new infrastructure will be paid, what will be the regime under which it will operate, whether it will be mainly merchant or mainly regulated. Uh, to the extent that it will be regulated, we have to think whether costs uh, associated with this new infrastructure um, will be paid by just by the grid users located in the same jurisdictions, or whether to the extent that they provide a wider, wider benefit or benefit to a wider set of consumers, uh, there may be an issue about cost allocation. And this is again a f not a completely new uh, issue because as we know since 2002 we have been having a entity as a compensation scheme but it's clearly entering into a new dimension. So these are very very uh, sort of topical issues and I think it is very important and interesting that they are discussed at all levels among regulators but also in academia and I think that the executive seminars now which have been introduced by the Florence School of Regulation are an excellent idea to complement the other activities of the Florence School, but also to complement uh, the other discussion fora. 
bringing together regulators and stakeholders is, creates that sort of consensus and understanding which in other areas has so far produced the best results in the internal energy market.